Hi everyone, it's Kat. Thanks for joining me today for another process video. Today I am making a thank you card that is a shaker card and I'm going to do a little bit of watercoloring and stamping and Copic coloring. So let's start out with this little kitty cat. This is from Newton's Nook and I'm coloring the kitty to look like my cat Jax who is gray with black and white um, and dark gray all over. I'm not really really good at coloring like faces and stuff so I'm just doing him in a like a gray and if you go to my blog there's a picture of Jax underneath the picture of this card so you can see the difference between the kitties. So I'm just adding a little bit of a shadow now and then I'm going to go back in with my lighter Copic marker and blend it all out. And then I'm going to take a light pink and I'm going to add pink to the ears and to the little nose and then my kitty will be all colored. This is a really easy image to color. The first pink that I used was too pink, so I used like a peachy pink on top of it. So now I'm gonna fussy cut my little kitty out. And a lot of people ask me about these scissors. They're called Elizabeth Craft, they're by Elizabeth Crafts, and I can't remember what they're called. I think they're called snippers or snips or something like that, but they're really, um, good for people who kind of stink at fussy cutting like me. <laughs> I'm really bad at fussy cutting and I'm not good at staying on the black line and not having white, you know, outside the edge and stuff. And these make it a lot easier. So I don't fussy cut often, but when I do, I use these. And I'll have a link to these and all the other products that I use in this video in the description box as well as on my blog. So I'm going to go ahead and cut him out. And then just to finish him off so that you don't see the white paper around the edges, I'm going to take a Copic multi-liner with a brush tip and I'm going to go around the little die cut and just color in the edges. <clears throat> so he's all finished. I'm going to show you real quick what he looks like. There we go. And now I'm going to get some pattern paper out. I'm using the Baxter 6x6 paper pad by Studio Calico 7 paper. And I'm going to glue two pieces of paper together and then die cut them together because I want, I want both of them on the front. And I just figured it would be easier this way. So I'm going to use my Lawn Fawn large stitched rectangle dies to cut out the base layer for my card. And I'm going to run that through my Vagabond. You can't see me die cutting because my Vagabond is behind my desk where I film, but you can tell what I'm cutting out because it's on, it's on screen. So now that's cut out and I'm just going to take the post-it tape off to reveal the die cut. And then I'm going to add a little more adhesive just so it sticks better and then cut off the excess paper in the back. I can't remember what I did next. Oh, okay, so I have this wood paper pad by My Mind's Eye, and it's still available, I believe. I'll have a link to it, but I'm going to use it to cut out a window frame from this My Favorite Things window die, and it cuts the frame and a little ledge, which I think is really cool. So I'm just going to set that aside, and now I'm going to work on the background of the window and I'm going to use some Canson watercolor paper. I tried to use the Tim Holtz paper, but it pilled up really bad. Um, I don't know if that's a word, pilled, but it was, it was just a mess. So I'm using this Canson watercolor paper, and it's much better. So I'm spritzing it with some water, and then I'm going to take my Peerless watercolors and a Ranger broad tip water brush, and I'm just going to squiggle on some blue, and then I'm going to spritz it again and then tilt my cutting board that I have it taped to so that it kind of drips up and down and back and forth and then I'm going to dry it and then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing again and add a second layer. I think watercolor looks really cool when you do a layer and then dry it and then do another layer and then dry it. Every layer kind of looks different and I just, I just love the way that that looks. So I'm finished with my little background and I'm going to take a square die from my favorite things also and I'm gonna cut out the same size as the window frame so I'm just using a pencil to mark where I want to cut my square 
So as you can tell, I'm using my magnetic, um, what is that called? Magnetic, I don't know, base plate or whatever. Um, it helps keep the dies in place when you're die cutting. Not always, but sometimes. <laughs> so I've got my glass mat out now, and I'm going to use my fuse tool to try to make a shaker window. Now I'm going to make a mistake, and I'm going to explain to you what I did wrong while I'm filling this up with sequins and stuff. I used two pieces of acetate from a stamp set, and I was going to fuse them together, but I found out that you can't do that with a fuse tool. It won't work on acetate. So I'm going to have to peel it up in a minute. You're, you're going to see me try to do it after I add some of these little hearts and it just doesn't it doesn't do it like it doesn't work and I kept thinking why well, why isn't it going through you know it's not working and then I realized well maybe it's the cardstock underneath the plastic so I'm gonna peel it up and remove the cardstock and put the acetate directly on the glass mat and then I'm gonna try it again with the fuse and then I'm gonna find out that it's not gonna work <laughs> So if you want to make a shaker window, don't try to use acetate with your fuse because it won't work. So here I go again trying to make it fuse together and I realized that it just was not the right material. So I'm getting out one of these CD sleeves and I got these off Amazon and I use them to store my die cuts in. And I'm just going to pour the sequins in the little CD sleeve and I'm going to use that as my shaker portion of the card. So now my fuse tool just easily sealed it. And I made two lines because the little sequins I used were teeny tiny and there were little beads in there. So I did two lines of sealing. And then I'm just going to cut that little window out. And then I have my little shaker portion. Now I did make a mistake with this card and I'll show it to you in a little bit, but the shaker material doesn't really shake in the card when I'm finished because I forgot to add foam <laughs> but it still looks cute so I still sent it to the recipient so now I've got some craft foam or fun foam whatever you want to call it and I am using brown because I want it to go behind my little window frame and I wanted to pop up the frame a little bit just so it wasn't flat on the card and I'm going to take some Ranger multi, medium, and matte finish, and I'm going to put that on the back of the foam so that I can glue the paper or the cardstock on it. And I had a really hard time squeezing this because, I, like I mentioned earlier, I have rheumatoid arthritis, and I have a hard time squeezing things. And it took two, I had to use two hands to get the glue out of this little bottle. It was just really hard to get it out. I think I'm going to get the big bottle that has the brush on it. I think that'll be easier for me because I just can't squeeze things. So now I've glued the cardstock on top of it and it's a little bit dimensional and I'm going to show that to you up close real quick. And now I'm going to do the same thing with the little ledge. I do like the precision tip that I use on the on the multi-medium. It's just so hard to squeeze through for me that it makes it, you know, difficult. So now that my frame is together, I'm going to work on my card base. So I've got some Gina K 120 pound pure luxury cardstock, and this is the smoothest, thickest cardstock I've ever used. I absolutely love it, and it's all that I will buy from now on. Um, I used to use Nina, and before that, I used Paper Tray Ink, um, but I am just I'm a paper snob now, and I won't use anything other than Gina K if I can help it. So now I'm going to use the other die, the negative portion of the die, and I'm going to cut out the little window area out of the main card base. And that's going to let me put the shaker portion behind it. So I'm just going to go ahead and add some adhesive. I'm using my ATG because it's really strong adhesive. It's a yellow ATG and that's the half inch tape. So now I've got my little shaker portion on there and I'm adding ATG here but I should have added foam tape. If I had added foam tape it would shake easier than it does but I just didn't think about it so live and learn. So now I'm adding some more of that multimedia to the little window frame. And this time it came out a lot easier. I didn't have to use both hands. It was really weird. And then I'm going to add the little ledge 
and then the front of my card will be finished. But I wanted to do something sweet to the inside. Oh no, I did, I did add the cat. <laughs> I almost forgot about the kitty cat. So I'm adding uh, like three little foam tabs on the back of his tail to hold him up so that he is, looks like he's sitting on the window ledge. And now the front of my card is finished. So it says love cats on there on that paper, which is really cute. So I was thinking about the inside of the card and there's a sentiment in one of these stamp sets that says, thank you for taking care of me. And it's meant to go with a sick day type, you know, like a get well or whatever stamp set. But because she took such good care of our kitty while she was watching him, I thought it would be perfect for this card. So I'm going to go ahead and use that on the inside after I put this little strip of paper down. I ran out of cardstock, so I had to use my scraps there. So I'm going to get out my MFT pierced, is it, yeah, pierced heart dies, and I'm going to use the second largest heart to cut a piece of pattern paper that matches the front of the card, and I'm going to use that on the inside so that I can stamp my sentiment on it, because I just didn't want to stamp it on the plain white. I, I just don't like the inside of my cards to be plain. So that's what I'm doing now is die cutting that little heart. Isn't that card cute? I really love how this card turned out, even though I forgot to put foam tape on it. So I'm using my VersaFine Black Onyx ink, and that's a really good ink for sentiments. And I'm stamping the sentiment that says, thanks for taking care of me. And then there's also this little heart die that has two hearts, and I'm going to stamp that up on the left. And then there's a little paw print, and I'm going to stamp that on the bottom right. And I think that's just adorable, and I, I really think that the lady that I'm giving this to will love it. So I'm adding some adhesive and sticking it down, and that is my card. It's complete. So thanks for, uh, for watching, guys. I will see you next time. Bye.